Thank you. Uh, like you said, um, my name is Dave Holtine. My wife was with me here. Her, her name is Stephanie. And uh, this is our home. Um, we are from, like you said, DeKalb County, which uh, our address is Lee, Illinois. And uh, this right here was, um, we've lived in there just, uh, they went online about December of 2009. Um, so what makes us different from probably most people here is we are actually experts at living within the turbines. Um, we've heard a lot of the theory kind of behind uh, the economics and what they sound like. And then we come from a different vantage point of we actually live with them day by day. And, and this is basically what we have to deal with um, from what we have here. Um, all the pictures that I'm going to show you today are from our property, except for two. I'll, I'll let you know uh, what those ones were. But you can definitely see that um, uh, we are surrounded. Uh, this is a view from the front of our home. We have 13 uh, within one mile, like you stated and two just over the 1,400 foot away from our residence, from our, um, the actual foundation of our home here. Uh, we have four and a quarter acres. Um, we were never approached by a wind company to um, install any turbines, uh, but we uh, um, are left to um, uh, be left at the consequences there. Um, as you see, this is another view here. They pretty much dominate the landscape that we have to live in now. Um, it's not, they disappear in the horizon, they actually, uh, um, everywhere we look, we see turbines. Um, to give you a basic general overview here, this is off of our front porch, what we see in the, uh, um, in the horizon there, but um, we have 145 in the development around us. They are GE 1.5 megawatt turbines. Um, they are owned by a company called NextEra Energy Resources, a um, company based out of Florida, and uh, they, uh, like I said, were put online December of 2009. Um, this is basically, um, and by the way, these are 398 foot to the tip. Um, so just to give you a little perspective, um, the ones they're proposing here, getting close to 500 foot, so quite a bit taller. Um, but these ones are the uh, GE 1.5s. Um, this is basically a map overview of the DeKalb County portion of, um, of what we have here. Um, oops, shoot, press the wrong button here, just one second. As you can see, I'm a cabinet maker, so that doesn't have anything to deal with this. <laughs> okay, back to here. Sorry about that. You can see some of my work, so uh, I'm giving out cards later on if you need anything. Um, anyway, it might be a little long drive, but we'll, we'll talk about that. So as you see here, this is basically the uh, DeKalb County portion of uh, what the wind company basically gives out. Um, you can see this, mile, this uh, circle right here, that's the mile surrounding my home. Um, but you can see, basically to give you a perspective of what this is, this is about eight miles wide right here and it's about almost 11 miles tall right there. So uh, this is where, and then there's some actually um, come to this area right here. This is the Lee County portion. There are some in Lee County over here. There's 18. Um, this is the town of Shabana right here, which um, our kids go to school in. This is actually the town of Lee. There's no school there, but um, you can see, and basically these yellow lines around here, those are the mile and a half uh, um, beyond the city limits right here. The town of Shabana actually right here voted to have them within the mile and a half um, of their city limits. The town of Lee didn't, so these couple right here were never placed um, after the fact. So kind of give you an overview of what we have here. Um, I did it again. <laughs> I'll press the right button next time. All right. So uh, as you see right here, this is a zoom in of where we are um, within the project right here. The star is where uh, my property is located here. Uh, we are... Um, Right here is, uh, this is actually number 29 in real life here. This one right here and number 30 are the two closest to my property. Um, and this one right here is probably about 1,900 foot away and maybe so is this number 31. Um, so you can kind of see, and then to our south we have three to our south, um, four to the east, and two to the north, and then plus these couple up right here. Um, so kind of, that'll give you an overview of where we are. Here's an aerial uh, view of kind of what they look like in situation of um, how they work within the home right here. These are the two to the north of our property here. Um, you can see the access lanes that they have to put into every single turbine. Um, so then they, they can have access to that point right here. Um, so basically the gist of what we want to kind of go over with you today here is uh, from our experience and what the realities actually are, we're going to go over what wind companies say and what they do are two completely different things. We've already had um, a good uh, overview of, of quite a few of those things this morning, but we're going to go through of what life is actually like here. Um, coming back to here, uh, one, one specific uh, 
uh, way to look at this here is, as you see right here, all these red lines are actually the under underground collection lines, basically to hook up turbine to turbine to, to get power to the turbines and then get power off the turbines into the grid. And so basically right here, you see from their drawings what they want to tell people that says, oh, we're going to stay right along the road, which this is the, um, the road that we live on right here. They're going to stay right along the road and then come right next to the access lanes and make everything nice and pretty. So you look at that and you says, okay, that, that looks good on paper. Um, but what you actually see is right here, this kitty corner line, that's actually where they put their underground collection line in, right kitty corner across the, uh, um, the uh, farmer's field right there. Well, uh, that corn this year was pretty short. Will it ever recoup? I don't know, but they basically put all the trench lines right there. Um, doesn't necessarily affect me, but you know what? It's one of those um, points that you can kind of see that what they say and what they do are two completely different things. Um, basically, uh, looking right here, number 30, 31, 32, and 33, this is what it looks like from the back of my home. Um, this, is, uh, this is out in the property behind us, th and so basically, they dominate. And basically, what we, s what we talk about here is we talk about proper siding or improper siding, um, the difference between irresponsible wind energy and responsible well, renewable energy. And so we look at this right here and we, we talk about the many effects that it has on the neighboring homes. Um, our first thing we're going to talk about today is something called shadow flicker. And uh, um, some people might have uh, seen a video online. We, I had a couple of those that are from our property mm -hmm. here. Basically, uh, when the sun rises in the east right here, um, they come up and they behind the turbine. So basically the turbine is in between the sun and our residence. And so um, what happens in the morning is the blades, you see the blade rotation, you see the blade ro rotation, and it starts for us right here, and uh, this one starts about March, and it comes up here through about June, and then it goes back to September right there. And that's basically in the eastern sky. Right now it's probably somewhere over here, so we don't have it at this point, but again, we, we went through it last year, we'll have to go through it again, and again, and again, year after year after year. And so basically we could have up to 45 minutes in the morning. And so we look at the shadow flicker, we says, okay, what, what do the wind companies say about shadow flicker? Um, so we, we look at, this is actually right off the Nextera Energy Resources website, uh, the company that put them around us, and they talk about, you know what, they examine the quality of life. You know, on paper that sounds great. They're, they're really thinking about people like me. And so we, we read all the way down here, and then it says basically, it says, uh, to alleviate this, we seek to position the turbines so they're not directly between the sun and the house at those times of the day. You know, on paper, I mean, they're really doing a good job to make sure that this doesn't happen. And so basically at that point, this is a shot here in, in uh, probably the end of May last year. And so basically right, right in the center of the home right there, that's where the, uh, the hub is. And you can see when I zoom out here, just the overall mass of what it actually is. My property is 300 foot wide, 615 foot deep. And so that's repetitive for up to 45 minutes in the morning. So is that responsible? Well, that's, and if you wanted to drink a cup of coffee up there in the morning, beautiful sunny morning like this, that, that would just drive you crazy. And so we go to, um, we try to think, okay, we, we saw some stuff for the American Wind Energy Association, a uh, big lobbying group for the uh, wind companies. And he says, well, what do they say about shadow flickers? So we, we look through here and it says uh, um, appropriate noise uh, setbacks for noise will be sh sufficient to prevent shadow flicker problems. So you look at that again and says, okay, well, I shouldn't have a problem at all with shadow flicker. Um, so from the inside of my home, this is what we have on Sunday mornings. It's something you can't sleep through if you even wanted to, just that constant pulsation. So, okay, I was, I was looking at the at, at the reflection. Now, that's not in the exact reflection of it. And so we, we come downstairs, and that's what we're left with. And so what it says on paper sounds really, really good because you think, oh, they're, you know what, they want to they wanna protect people like us to make sure that we're not going to be affected. And, you know, the sad thing about our development and other developments I've seen is I could take this video at my neighbor's houses, I could take it anywhere I want to. It's, it's not just I'm the only person out there. I'm the only one, I mean, not the only one that's put it online, but, uh, but we, um, 
Yeah, I, so I could take it pretty much anywhere. So we look again, one more place from their website. What's a shadowing effect? It talks about that. And it says uh, they've uh, self-imposed requirements to locate turbines at least 650 feet to virtually eliminate all shadowing to a residence. We're going to learn one thing today that, you know what, a definition can mean so many different things. Uh, maybe their definition of virtually eliminate is, uh, we'll, we'll give you maybe 40, 50 hours. That's, that's enough to virtually eliminate it. Maybe that's their definition. I don't know what it is, but from that right there, I would say, is, you know what, I shouldn't experience it. If I do, it should be not enough for, where you can even um, know what it actually is doing there. And so, now I'm actually behind a tree in these videos. And so, once I pan it out there, um, you'll see that even behind there, you still get the, you still get the pulsation even behind a tree. And we're gonna talk about trees in a minute here and what, what they actually, um, would we've heard the word mitigate. So you can just see just the overall, just the mass of there over and over again. Some people talk about, oh, you know what, I have a, I have a um, uh, ceiling fan. I get shadow flicker all the time from my ceiling fan. I'm like, well, that's not quite a ceiling fan right there. And you know what, you actually have a switch to your ceiling fan. If it bothers you, turn it off. I don't have a switch to these things. And so this is what we're left with in the end. Are those the ones for 1,300 feet? Uh, that one is the one for 1,400 foot. Um, the ones, even the, I'll get shadow flicker all the way from three quarters of a mile away. Uh, the intensity will be a little bit different, but it will still be there. And the duration will be a little bit less too. Well, we'll talk about that in a second here. So basically, coming back to this point right here, 30, 31, 32, and 33. That's, that's where those are coming from right here. 28 and 29 are far, far enough north where they cr won't create any problems. And 36, 37, and 38 are far enough south. So we, we get them all from the east. But we talk about proper sighting. That's, that's what it all kind of comes down to. They know, I can look at any map out there and says, you know what, they're right east of my home. What's gonna happen? Where does the sun rise? But you look and says, okay, am I the only one? Well, okay, so I'm right here at 19, well, where the star is. Okay, this home right here is my neighbor to the mile to the west of me. Okay, what's 30, 31, 32, and 33 gonna do to her? And the sunset, you're right. It's pretty, it's pretty uh, common sense right there. It won't be left because she's off her side. Nope, there won't be because she'll get it at a little bit different time during the year because um, the, basically the sun is gonna, right now the sun is coming up right here. Eventually, it's going to come up right here for me. So basically, the sun's going to go down over here. What's going to be between them? The sun's going to go down right here. What's going to be in between them? So it's going to be a little bit different times of the year, but no matter what, it's going to happen the same type of intensity as what I have. Um, what's going to happen right here at this residence? Uh, 28 right here is going to get them. Um, what's going to happen there here at this residence? 26 and 27. They're going to get it in the afternoon. Uh, what's going to happen uh, right here at this residence? They're going to get it in the morning and the afternoon. It's pretty common sense. I don't have to be uh, one of their experts that says, oh, we did modeling, and, and that's what it comes out. It's, it's all pretty much sun rises, sun sets. People get it in the wintertime differently uh, because of the pitch of the sun, and they won't get it in the summer. It's going to be, you know what, no matter what, somebody has sat shadow flicker. Um, okay, so we get the word mitigation. For us, they said anything over 30 hours, they'll mitigate commercially reasonable uh, methods of mitigation. So we look at that and says, Oh, well, you know what, we want to put blinds in your home. And so from an, from an outside standpoint, that sounds good. You know what, we can draw the blinds if we don't like it. Okay, well, I don't have blinds in my home. I live almost 400 foot off the road. I don't need blinds. Uh, if people go by the house and they want to look in, well, that's fine. But I don't, I don't need them. I, I never wanted to, wanted to have them. And if I wanted them, I would have put them in myself. So, uh, and so you, go, you go to the uh, different thought processes and says, okay, so if it's going to be sunny in the morning, then I have to look at the weather forecast and says, all right, I want to, I got to close my blinds that night before I go to bed so I could wake up in the morning peaceful or something like, or whatever I, um, so it's different from what I used to wake up. Now, if it's cloudy in the morning, I don't have to draw the blinds. But what if it's a nice breeze at nighttime where I have my windows open, uh, but I, it's going to be sunny in the morning. Well, what do I do? Do I have to then turn the air conditioning on and I don't have to enjoy the breeze because you can't have blinds closed with your windows open because it gets sucked into the windows. So how is it actually going to work? For me, it's not going to work. 
it might work for somebody, but it's one of their um, ways of trying to deal with something that it should be, the consequences aren't enough. Uh, somebody said about trees, and, that, and that's a good point. You could say, okay, you know what, I could, I mean, this tree right here, this tree's decent size. If I had it over here, it would probably help. Well, mitigation means so many different things. But then you look at that, that tree's probably uh, 30, 40, 50 years old, maybe. And so I, I did a little drawing right here, and it says, okay, the, the turbine's 398 foot tall. Uh, let's say it's 1,420 foot away from my property. At my property line, if I wanted to put the trees out there, I would need 120 foot trees. Okay, um, at 55 foot away from my home, I don't want them too close to my home because I don't want to feel like I'm in a forest. I like my open views. We got beautiful um, farm ground where we're at. And uh, I love to see out, see the bus coming, that type of stuff. So I figured at 55 foot right now away from the home, I need 35 foot trees to uh, supposedly take care of the situation right then for immediate um, uh, mitigation. And then I need a wall of trees because what I can't be on my property anywhere else. And so you start looking at that and says, okay, if I'm gonna enjoy my property, I have to live in a forest. Right. Well, are they gonna do that? No, they won't put that many trees because they use the word commercially reasonable. And they're gonna tell me it's not commercially reasonable. So where are we left with that? Well, what's the biggest Norway spruce they can, they can move? Maybe in 30 years, they'll be big enough and full enough where I'll be in a forest, but will it happen right now? No, it won't. So one of their arguments that is completely not worth it, worth it there. Um, beautiful sunny afternoon in the uh, summertime here. Um, and there it is, it's, it still hasn't gone anywhere. But we're gonna talk about, uh, we heard a lot about the, uh, the science behind the sound and how it's all measured, but um, what we actually feel and what we uh, experience on a day-to-day -day type of basis, there's a lot of different things. Um, and they, they can go anywhere from just, they can be silent. Either they're, um, either they're not on, because there's a lot of times where they're not on, um, because there's not enough wind or there's maintenance or something like that. Uh, and two, sometimes uh, there's, they might be not fully, and I'll talk about the pitch of the blade too and how that interacts with the sound too. Sometimes that might be lightly spinning, and very, very hard to decipher. And then sometimes you hear the, you hear the light whoosh, and then sometimes it sounds like there's a jet engine or a train that never is coming but never gets there. We get the low frequency and the drone noise in our home. And then when there's actually icing on the blade, then it's just completely unbearable outside. It produces the extreme noise that um, is just uh, not anything what it is. So um, I'm gonna have my wife talk a little bit more about the sound. She has um, some vantage points that um, she can talk about some. I'm his wife, also known as Stephanie. Um, just want to um, give a little background about myself. Um, I'm a mom to four young children, and um, I'm a part-time teacher, and I love to be home. Um, I like to crochet and knit and cook and garden sometimes. Um, but I'm home a lot, so I'm home with the turbines a lot, and I'm um, just going to talk to you a little bit about the sound of them. Um, when we had found out that they were coming into our area, which we weren't given much notice. Um, my husband and I went out and checked out some wind farms that were fairly close to us. And uh, we heard about that they may make, make sounds and, and those kind of things. So we drove up to close to some of them and we rolled down the window and listened for you know a little bit. And you know, we didn't really hear much. We might have just heard a light whoosh or something. But we thought, all right, this isn't going to be too bad. Um, you know, there was a lot of constant motion, um, a lot of blinking lights, that, those kinds of things. But we thought, okay, maybe this isn't going to be too bad. Um, so they came online um, December uh, 2009. I remember I was sitting on the couch and uh, I was heard everything was quiet in the house, the kids were in bed, and I heard this sound like sneakers in a dryer, like tumbling, or like, um, like, uh, I don't know, there's just different kind of vibrations, but the television was on downstairs. So I w went around the house and looked around and, and I you know, couldn't find anything that was on. And so I, just, I realized, wow, really, that's the turbine noise that was coming in. So, um, you know, it's, it's, and now that's our, our, um, our new normal. 
We have this background noise of this hum, 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 hum noise that we hear in our house, that low frequency noise. And then when we're outside, we hear the swishing sound, um, this over and over and over again pulsating noise um, that keeps us up at night. We have lost sleep because of this noise that comes into our, into our house. Um, there are some times in the morning or even during the day, we don't even have to look out the window. We can feel it in our bodies and we know that the turbines are on. You know, we'll wake up in the morning, oh, the turbines are on. You know, we just, we can feel it. Feel it in our bodies and feel it in our house. Sometimes, I'll, I'll tell Dave, it sounds like sometimes there are people outside shaking pieces of sheet metal over and over again, just kind of like off in the distance. Um, it's over and over again noise. Um, I noticed the poster back here, it says, be a buddy, not a bully. And there's a couple other signs around here I wish that the wind companies would um, take heed to and would abide to. Um, you know, the wind companies came in and they wanted to be a good neighbor and they wanted to work with people and that kind of thing. But it has completely torn our community apart. Um, people don't even go to the same churches anymore they had gone to. Um, there's, you know, dissension in families and neighbors not talking to each other and, you know, it, it, it really is sad. And so they, they come in, they want to be a great neighbor, but they're not. And, and we, we kind of feel like we're bullied a little bit. Um, the wind companies they, that work with us, the Next Air Energy, which is the Florida Power and Light, they had told us that the turbines sound like a refrigerator. And so, um, you know, that's kind of true, you know, but it's misleading. Because yeah, sometimes they do sound like a refrigerator, but they also sound like a jet plane, and you know, at other times. Um, and you know, probably many of you live out in the country, you know that, that peace, that deep peace. Um, and so, you know, we'll have that when the turbines are off, and then when they come on, then we have this low hum, hum, droning noise. And so they say, oh, we'll just get used to it. So we're supposed to get used to the peace, and then the sound again, and the piece, the sound, you know, it's just, it's, it's very wearing, and it's very stressful, actually. Um, so they told us it should sound like, they, they sound like a refrigerator. And so I was thinking about that. I'm like, well, okay, but who wants to be pushing their child on a swing with a refrigerator next to their head? Or who wants to be biking with a refrigerator next to them? Or biking around a property? You know, or going to sleep at night and have that refrigerator next, next to your head? You know, and that's, you know, what they say and what they do are, like my husband was saying, they're, they're two different things. Um, we had started a blog, I think you saw it up here, it's um, lifewiththecowturbines.blogspot.com, and it's just like a diary, and we go, you know, we chime in every few days and we tell about what the sound is like, and we start rating the turbines from a, a zero up to a six of what they sound like. <laughs> Um, and so it's really great reading. You have to check it out. <laughs> uh, but we, we do have our videos on there, and you know we wanted to give people an idea of what it's like every day because our, our, our um, the picture of our house is on the front cover of the Chicago Tribune. There was an article about the wind turbines in our area. I'm like, oh my goodness, our picture. We didn't realize it was near the front cover. But um, I there was a, that next week there was a man that was out at the end of our driveway and. He was just sitting in his car, and I'm like, what is this man doing out there? Like, oh, so I went out there and said, oh, can I help you? He goes, oh, I'm just listening to the turbines. It's like, oh, well, I mean, they're not really that noisy today. The blades aren't really pitching the wind. And, um, and so he said, oh, okay, and we just kind of took off. And that's when we decided, well, you know, let's start this blog, because we have good days, and then we have some not so good days. And we just wanted to give people, you know, a perspective and the truth of what it really is like to live with the turbines. Um, we haven't been paid to come here at all. You know, we're coming here because we just want you to know what life is like. You know, some people will say, oh, we're NIMBYs, not in my backyard people. Well, if that's true, why are we here? <laughs> you know? Um. What? <laughs> no, nothing. <laughs> um, and someday we might have to sell our house because, you know, we can't take it. And I was thinking about, you know, people moving out to the country and, you know, I've never, I haven't heard yet of someone going up to a realtor and saying, you know, I'd like to live out in the country and I really want to live next to a 400 foot turbine. So, you know, I don't even know if we'll be able to sell our house, but. Um, anyway, um, count our blessings. Um, thanks for being here. So thanks.
I do have a couple more things, so I know that's back is for her, so she, she deserves it. Um, all right, so we're going to come back to the stuff here and, and says, okay, well, what do they talk about uh, on, on their websites or what do they talk about in their literature about the noise? They say um, it's virtually undetectable. And so you look at that there and he says, okay, well, that sounds good. I shouldn't, I shouldn't hear it or maybe once or twice a year I should hear it if it's virtually undetectable. And then, um, then what happens when it, uh, when it gets icy out and um, blade, uh, ice forms in the blades and then you got a lot more imperfections on the blades which creates more of the vortices which they're kind of talking about. What happens at that point? Uh, do we still have to live there or do we get a free pass to go someplace else? No, we still live there. That's, that's where we sleep and that's where we, uh, that's where we live. And so this video right here was taken um, a couple weeks ago, but you can kind of tell just what the quality of the sound is when we, when we go out of the, outside of the house. Uh, would you want to be outside during this? I don't know, but it's, it's, uh, it's not really what they say here. Um, oh, here, uh, careful sighting. They talk about um, they really want to address the concerns about what reaches the people. is isn't necessarily the case. Um, they, this, is a, this is a graph that you've probably seen a lot of places, whether it's American Wind Energy on NextEra's website, but it basically says turbines range between 35 and 45 uh, decibels, and they, they put it um, below an office, and they, they put it just right above the whispering, which is very convenient right there. So um, that's, that's what they say about it, and then this, this video is actually what we hear. That's what happens repetitive, repetitive. I mean, that right there is only probably 30 seconds of it. Well, it's probably turned up a little bit louder than what it is. So I, I measured basically I had a maximum of 57 right there, DBA. But that's just a little handheld one. Um, it wouldn't hold up in court or anything like that, but I just want to give you a perspective. It's not the, they say maximum of 45 usually. So, um, but when we get to something like that, we think, okay, um, you know, I heard some of the raindrops. You know what, I was taking that with a JVC handheld $200 video camera. I mean, I can't capture what it actually is doing right there, but you know, that's, uh, they say that it only goes up to 45 from what they say. So um, one thing, um, I can answer your question in a, in a minute here. One thing they talk about too is it says, okay, uh, pitch of the blade. Um, I've had plenty of time to, to look at them. I've had a year to look at them out the, out the window of my shop or out the window of the house or, or working in the yard. And what I found is there's a lot more a lot of times if you hear them, or if you go someplace to listen to them and you think, oh, I don't hear them, well, you're going to be listening to the turbine on the left. That's typically uh, where they have the least amount of, of sound. That's when they're, um, the blades are pitched um, out of the wind a little bit. Um, when, they, uh, when they're just lightly spinning, they're not really producing power at that point. They're basically just almost kind of like a free spinning situation. You don't hear the, um, the turbine uh, whining and the, uh, the, the generator type of stuff because it's not really putting any type of output out there. Um, but you can see manipulation, you go to the one on the right right there, and uh, you see that the blades are um, pretty much um, completely vertical. They even tip back in the negative direction, which is back towards the, the tower. That's actually probably about a zero right there, or maybe a plus one. They can go back to minus three as well, too, in the back direction. That's when uh, you're, they're putting the most amount of pressure onto the turbine unit, or the generator, usually because um, the blades are fully facing into the wind. You're going to get the um, most amount of vortices, as they're kind of talking about before. The tips um, and the actual RPM is going to be the highest. Usually it's 18 or 19, roughly. And that's when uh, the noise definitely comes in. Uh, weather conditions do vary a little bit, but when you're 1,400 foot away from a turbine, if the wind's from the north, south, east, or west, and they're pitched like that, you hear it. People say, oh, if you're downwind, you hear it more than upwind. When you're that close, it doesn't matter. I could, I could have a northeast wind, I hear it. Um, the one video that I shot, I think was, or the next one here, there's actually a southwest wind. I'm actually to the uh, west of the turbines. I shouldn't hear very much at all because all the sound's going the other way. It's not the case. And so pretty much 
Um, and then you know what? And what happens if you're in the middle of the field listening to it, or you're actually sitting on our front porch, or you're walking around the yard? It interacts with the buildings. You could sit, you could stand one place and hear two of them playing with each other, and then you could go someplace else and just hear the one. And then you, so it's it's how it interacts with your property, and that's something that they don't tell you about either. And so this is the other day the whistle. I've never heard that they ever said that they whistled before. They never told me that. And so we asked them about it, and they kept on saying to us and, and our county administrator, they said, oh, you know what? It's a, it's a fault of the turbine. We can fix it. And so that, that sounds good. And then in the end, they said, oh, it might be an imperfection in the blade. They brought out somebody with a microscope or whatever to look at the blade. And of course, where it's end, ended up, it says, oh, that's probably just typical turbine noise. But it's below the level that we're required to have, so you know what? It, it, it shouldn't matter. <coughs> And so, what, what do they say about that? Well, they completely step around it and say, oh, you know what, it's just turbine noise, that's just something you have to live with. And you know what, that whistle, you wanna talk about annoying, it happened for a full day one time. Is that supposed to be, is that um, virtually undetectable? I don't think it is. Um, another thing that they give us, they say is, oh, you know what, we wanna give you an 800 number, you can call us anytime you want, it's 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Okay, so that sounds good. Oh, it's an answering service, and they say, oh, hello, this is Next Extra Energy, or they'll say, this is Next Era, and then they ask us where we're from, and so on and so forth. And uh, they ask us if it's an emergency or not. And uh, from the one uh, video, the first video I showed, which is uh, the 17th of January, um, we made a complaint, and to this day, I still have not received a call back. Um, and they'll say, well, we don't have to call you back because we already addressed your sound concerns and we, we showed that with a study that nothing's wrong. And so is that what an 800 number is supposed to do? I don't know. I'm just guess calling somebody in some state. I don't know where they're at. Is that, I mean, it sounds good. It says, you know what, they, they want to hear from us. But what are they going to really do with that? Absolutely nothing. Uh, property value guarantee. We're going to hear about that in a little bit here. But um, basically for me, property value guarantee means a whole different thing. Um, I built my house nine years ago. Um, I take a lot of pride in my home and my property. I want to have a nice place for my kids to be raised in. I grew up three miles away from where I built my house in, same school district that I grew up in. Um, I went to a local college, tried to stay as local as I could. Um, and you know what, I built this place to retire in and to, um, and to do that. I wanted a place for my kids to always come back to. So property value doesn't really mean a thing to me because my property is priceless right now. And, and so, uh, we, so when you start thinking about that, this says, oh, we're, we can give you what you want. And of course, it all ends up in the end with litigation because they never want to give me what I want for it because it's priceless to me. And so when I look at that right now, like my wife said, what do we have to do? We, uh, I talked to my county uh, zoning administrator. He's, I was like, what would you do if you were me? He says, I would move. Well, is that a good place to be? Is this really something that is, is needed in these rural areas like this? No, I don't think so. I have my, uh, my shop right behind my house right there. I wanted to make, give myself a home base that I could do that, and now I can't live like this. This is completely not what I had a year and a half ago. I didn't move, but I feel like I moved into an industrial park. So property value, for me, means a whole separate different thing. I mean, right now I have a cell phone number of the bus driver. I can call her up and say, hey, you know what, I'm not going to be home in time. Can you drop them off at my parents' house? They live on the same bus route. She's like, sure, no problem. I mean, how much is that worth right there? That, that right there is, is awesome. I mean, could I get that again? Well, I can't move my parents. I mean, but my parents are involved in this too. They're a little bit further away, but I can't kick them out of their house and take their house from them because I'm, I'm still involved in the same type of predicament that I am. And so, you know what, they, and it, this is my neighbor's issues too. I mean, it's the same type of thing. We weren't looking to move. When you usually plant in the country, you want to stay there. It's not like you want to keep on spinning all these houses and doing that type of stuff. It's actually taking away part of your life. And that's what it kind of comes down to with my respect to property value. Um, I don't want to put any scare tactics in what it is, but this is actually from our development. It's seven miles south of my home. And this was uh, probably the 8th of, 
of May is when this was taken. Um, I got this from a friend of mine that did some aerial um, work down there, but the, basically a, a blade shattered. Um, and as you see, if that was actually turned towards the uh, farm right there, that would have hit the trucks right there in that area because they had um, some of the blade throw, they, um, somebody said that they measured up to 1,500 foot. Well, they said it was a rare thing, which it could be, but it happened. And that's seven miles away from my home. And the same, same people put that turbine up and then one 1,400 foot away from my home. Is it going to happen again? Maybe, but you know what? This is, this is reality right here. Um, and they talk about, you know what? I want to be a good neighbor. I want to be part of the community. Uh, this is what they did to the town of Shabana. They let them, uh, Shabana let them in within a mile and a half area. And so these turbines, the furthest turbine is probably about a mile and a half out of town. The closest one's 1,400 foot just out of town. And so when you're coming down Route 30 right into town, uh, from, the west, uh, from the east going to the west, all you see is just basically a, a pinwheel outside of the town. As you come in, this is what you see. Is that what somebody that wants to be a good neighbor wants to do to the town? They made it into an industrial park. I mean, you can say what they look like, some beauties in the eye of a beholder, but no matter what, they put them way too close to the town. It's a town where my kids go to school. There's probably 1,400 people in the town. So it's not a huge town, but this is what they do. Another example, the town of Lee, like I said, they actually voted to keep them a mile and a half away from the town. Well, at that point, the next day after they voted, guess what they did? They put a, they put a lawsuit against the town. The town of Lee has 360 people in it. What are the, what's going to happen with that? And so that's what the wind company did. So is that being a good neighbor to sue the town that you're, uh, you, you want to come into? I mean, later they, they ended up getting the case dropped, but still, what's going on with these companies? Um, so basically, we have a different vantage point than a lot of you because we, we live with them. So we know that, you know what, there's a lot of questions. You have to ask question after question because they are not going to tell you these things. They're not going to just freely come out and say, uh, um, oh, there's going to be issues. There's going to be this, there's going to be that. They're not going to say that. They're salesmen. That's what happens. So, I mean, we have a lot more on our blog that you can ask them, but you know what? You have to ask these because if not, they're going to completely just say, oh, well, uh, that's just a typical turbine noise is what they kept on telling me. I mean, can you describe it? Uh, what's the quality of the sound? What do the turbines sound like? Do you actually live with these things? How can they actually sell something when they don't actually know what they do sometimes? Um, describe the shadow flicker. And we've, I mean, we've talked about a lot of things. What's your definition of local? For us, you know where everybody came from to build ours? Minnesota. Maybe, that's, maybe they think local is the United States. I don't know. Maybe so. But it's things like that. I mean, we had maybe a, a couple trucks running on the road, and that wasn't local. That was from another county. So you look at this stuff, and oh, oh, wait a second. I forgot about that they went to the gas station and bought some gas. You know what? What is your definition of local? I mean, you've got to get that because they're going to say local jobs. They're going to talk about all those type of things. But what does that really actually mean? Um, uh, we talked about foreign oil dependence. That's a huge thing. I mean, ask them how much electricity is actually produced by foreign oil. Um, will trees work? Well, will the blinds work? What's your definition of mitigation? It comes down to definitions. What does it actually, what the, their definitions mean? Because we see that if you actually define them with common sense, I guess they don't have any because the way I def define them and the, what we're living with are two completely different things. So things like that, I mean, here's our family right here. Uh, we drove five hours to come out here this morning. We left at 2 o'clock our time. And we'll see them tomorrow, but I'd rather be home with them right now. But you know what? It's important for people to be educated on what these things actually do uh, to, um, to, to people and to families. So um, hopefully nothing like this, nobody will be in our situation here. But, um, but it's important for people to really know what it is. And like we said, we have a blog. There are some things over there, uh, some little cards that you have them. Um, like Steph said, it's probably really fun reading, but it's, it's not really. It's kind of boring. But, um, but basically, it's just what we kind of go through on a day-to-day -day basis, what it sounds like, what we're doing. Um, but one thing I'd like to close with is a story that I, I heard from a guy. And he basically says, you know, when you, when you go into Walgreens and you get, a, you get a, some medication, and you look at the back, he says, okay, you, you see what it's going to do for you, all the, all the plus things that it's going to be. Okay, that, that's good. It's going to cure my cough. It's going to do this and that. But they're also right below that. It also says these are the side effects. It could, it could create uh, headaches or dizziness, so many different things. But the wind companies don't have to do that. They just says, oh, how great these things are going to be for everybody and so on and so forth. But they never tell you that, you know what, 
you might have a problem with shadow flicker. You might, you know what, the noise might keep you up at night. I know I don't sleep like I used to, but are they going to tell you that? No. So they're not required to do that, and that's a whole thing completely unregulated with lots of money, as we see, that completely takes advantage of people like us. I'm just a normal, everyday type of guy. I'm not a radical. I mean, I, I have a degree in physics, so I can relate with a lot of the things that were, was talked about before, but you know what? It comes down to the fact that, you know what, this is completely irresponsible for somebody to do this to people. And you know what, if there has to be a level of, I mean, being responsible for what they do, and that's something that's completely not done. So um, I'm open for any type of questions you have, uh, or if not, even in the, um, the question and answer time, or even after that, look me up, because you know what, I'm here to try to um, help anybody out. So I thank you again for your time. Uh, grab the mic. Okay. Sure thing. Who you want me to start with? Whoever. Thank you.